Hey guys, this is Lynn, and I am going to do a quick video tutorial on how to put a watermark on your cards or projects for your blogs. Now, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to do paint.net, which is a free program you can download off the internet. If you just Google paint.net, the very first thing that should come up should be this paint.net free software here. If you click that, and then at the very top, click download, and then you're going to want to scroll down and you're going to see a download box here with a square download now. So I'm going to click download now and then on the right I'm going to click free download now paint.net. Now I'm not going to download it because I already have it but feel free to download that and then pause this so you can come back to this tutorial. Now once you've got paint.net open this should be your screen and the very first thing you're going to want to do to make a watermark is you're going to add a layer because you don't want this white background to show up when you're placing it on your card. So you're going to go layers, add a layer, add a new layer. Now what this does is you can actually take your background and if you uncheck this little arrow here it disappears. Whenever you see this checkerboard background what that means is it's a, a blank background, nothing will appear. So for now to make this though we're going to want to use this background now when I make my watermark images, I just make them in white. Now if I make them on white right here now today, you won't be able to see them. So for all intents and purposes right now, I'm going to change the background and I'm going to highlight the background so that that's lit blue or lit, light lit up blue, light it up blue, lit up blue. And now go to adjustments and then hue and saturation. And I had already had mine set dark, but nevertheless, you can go to the lightness and move that bar all the way as far to the left as it'll go so it should say minus 100 and it'll turn it black. Now again you can make this disappear but for this tutorial I want to type in white so I want to be able to show you how, how the text shows up. Now you'll probably have this little bar right here will be black that'll be your primary text color. You're going to want to go and select it to white or gray or what have you. If you want to do gray you can go to more, you can change the iridescence, the transparency of the gray right here in this bottom box, but you can play with it all you want. I'm just going to give you the basics and do it in white. So after I've selected and I've got my primary and my background secondary color as white, I'm going to select the T for, for text and fonts, and then you're going to want to select a pretty high um, font size, because you can always make it smaller on your cards. So I'm going to select 72 for this tutorial. When I click the mouse anywhere on the black, the little blinky is going to appear, which means that's my where my typing is going to show up. So I'm going to want to start it as close to the edge as possible, and I'm going to type my name. Now, you'll notice that there's a little square box right here, and a hand shows up when I'm over top of it. I can grab that box, and I can move it around. So you're, you, you're going to want to move it when you're working on it. You, it's really difficult to figure out how to move it later. I haven't figured that out actually. So that looks good for me right now. And then I'm going to add your layer because I want my next layer to say copyright 2010. Now I don't want this as close to the, my name as it is. So I'm going to move this down here. And then I'm going to add one more layer. And this layer is going to be Digi's with Attitude. Now I need to grab that box, so let me move the layers out of the way. And there's that little box. And then I can see that my Digi's with Attitude is going to be a little bit too big. So I'm going to backspace this up. And I'm going to change my font size to 60. Okay, so now I can type this in again. Digi's with Attitude. Alright, and you can use any font you like. You can bring in different um, little pictures or water things like that. You'll notice when I use my watermark that I actually have already created. You'll you'll notice that I've got some little um, paraphernalia in there, some clip art and stuff. So you can add those in here. You just go layer, add a new layer, and continue from there. However, I'm happy with this. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to crop this because I don't want all this blank space down here. I want to crop it pretty tight around my actual watermark. So over here in tools there's a rectangle select. I'm going to select that and then 
everything highlights me, but I don't want everything. So I'm just going to highlight around the area that I actually want to crop, which that looks good right about there. And then up here, you're going to see all of these different little um, things you can do here. Next to the paste and deselect. Right in the middle, there's a crop to selection. So click crop to selection. Now I'm going to bring my layers box back out. And I'm actually going to take away the background. And I don't know if you can see it on the video, but nevertheless, all I can see right now is my checkerboard background, which will not appear on the thing I place this picture on, and my text. But I actually want to delete this background. I'm going to highlight it so background is highlighted blue. And then I'm going to click the little X to delete that layer. So that layer is now gone. Now I'm going to go image and then I'm going to go flatten because I want to flatten everything. And you'll notice over here all my layers now became a background. It's all one layer. And then I'm going to put the image to resize. And the width of this is seven, almost 800 pixels, which is quite large. I'm going to make that 600. And then I'm going to click OK. So now it's a little smaller. And when this comes in on a photo, I can shrink it. Now you're going to want to save this somewhere on your computer. So you'll go File, Save As. And when you go to save it, first thing you should do is change it from, the default will be paint.net. Change that to PNG. And then title it. So save it somewhere on your computer that you'll normally uh, be able to grab that quickly from. So nevertheless, I already have a watermark, so I won't be saving this one. I'm going to start a new project, and I'm going to leave it at the default sizes. And I, what I want to do is I want to go Layers, and I want to import from File the picture that I just took of my card. So I'm going to go there now. And it is this one that I want. Now there's my picture I just took of my card and I use a pizza box. Um, I got a blank pizza box and I just flipped it backwards to take my pictures. But nevertheless, I find that I like the white background so teach to his own. I'm going to select the rectangle, select key again, and I'm going to crop around my image. And I don't want so much on that side but I don't want to cut off all the feathers either. So now I've got this blue area, I'm going to go select that crop to selection and it's going to crop this picture to the size that I just cut it at. Now what I want to do here is I want to layer and on top of this layer I want to import from file and I'm going to go to where I save my watermarks and this is a Digis with Attitude card so I'll use that watermark. I have different watermarks for different projects and I kind of like it right about there. So now you'll see that I've got the handprints and the ink spatters and silly little things like that on here, but that's just my own personal preference. So now what I want to do is I, I like the way this looks. I want to image, flatten it all down, so now all, all of this becomes one layer. And then I want to go File, Save As, and then I'm going to save this as a JPEG. You should always save, um, well personally I always save my pictures for my blog as a JPEG. And I actually already have her saved. Um, I always put an MIF for my inky fingers. People that follow my blog will normally remember the MIF if they happen to save my picture for inspiration or you know to case it. It's easier to refer back to MIF for my inky fingers. I'm going to put the Grumpy Gretchen Sexy Witch and then I'm going to save that. Now, um, a little tip I'll give you really quick. You can actually back this up and you can back it up as far as you wish in order to undo the things you've done. And I want to back it up to the point where I have no watermark because I want a close-up of my card. So I'm going to crop her here. and I don't really need all of her but I do want a button in there. Now, because I didn't crop it as wide as I wanted it, I'm going to select the Move Selection key so I can grab the box and move it around. So I kind of like where that is, so I'm going to crop that. Okay, and now I've got her bigger. Now I'm going to layer, I'm going to import file again, go back to where my watermark is, and I'm going to import that watermark. Now you'll see here how it's really big. 
you can just grab the corner and shrink that down. So I'm going to leave that right up here in this corner and I like the way that looks. Now um, one step I happen to forget to mention is I usually resize my images to about 600 pixels um, width and how you do that is you, you go to image and then resize and then make sure the maintain aspect ratio is highlighted and then change the first one to 600 and normally the, the height will you know change depending on what your width was but I usually stick around the 600 width for all of my photos so there that's resize and I'm going to file save this as and you'll notice I didn't flatten it but that's okay because it'll prompt me to flatten it myself now I'm going to save it as this the Grumpy Gretchen Sexy Witch and I'm going to call it See You for Close Up so it's easy for me to find that now I'm going I'm happy with this image this is just showing you basically what you're saving and I'm happy with that and now it's asking me to flatten it because I didn't flatten it before so if you miss the flatten step it's not a big deal so with that being said hopefully I didn't go too fast and this gives you a good idea how to put that watermark on your cards. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to give me an email.